Revelation 12 tells of Archangel Michael's key role as the defender of the woman clothed with the sun. The woman clothed with the sun is the figure of the Archia Mary, beloved Mary, the mother of Jesus, rightfully called the queen of angels and the one whom God selected to bear the divine man-child. Who is that divine man-child? That is the universal Christ. That is the Son of God. That is the real identity of the living Christ in each one of us. The woman clothed with the sun represents woman today and the female principle in all of us. The soul is the feminine potential of being in both men and women. Archangel Michael came to defend the Divine Mother and her Divine Man-Child. He cast her adversary and all of his legions out of the courts of heaven into the earth. Revelation says, and there was war in heaven, that is, in the heaven world, which we call the etheric octave. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, that was Lucifer, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. What does this tell us? It tells us something very important. It tells us that fallen angels were consigned to the earth in human bodies as a punishment for their attempt to violate the Divine Mother and the Christ Child. Church fathers have vehemently argued against this interpretation of of Revelation, but I tell you that it is so. These fallen angels were literally cast into physical bodies where they would have to work out their karma and evolve through those physical bodies. The Christ child is the real identity of every one of you and every person on earth. The word Christ is not simply a Christian term. It is taken from the Greek word Christos. It means anointed. The Christ is the one who is anointed with the light of the I Am Presence. And the one who is anointed with that light is your own higher self, which you see as the center figure in the chart whom we address as the Holy Christ Self. We understand that God sent forth that only begotten Son as the divine man-child, and that he gave to each of us that personal presence of the Christ. A billion Christs times one is still one. There is only one Christ, one Son of God, but unto each of us is given that living Christ presence that we might commune personally with our Lord. In the great rebellion, Lucifer caused the fall of many other angels under him. It says his tail drew the third part of heaven. A third of the angels fell and followed him and imitated his ways of rebellion and pride. So through their pride and ambition, they fell from their state of heavenly grace. Many among them were required to take embodiment upon earth, as I have said, to work out their karma but also to give them a time to repent, to be saved, to turn about and face the Lord and accept him as their savior. Most of them have never done so. They have sworn eternal enmity against the Lord and his Christ. What exactly was Lucifer's sin? He committed the first act of self-idolatry. He fell through pride, ambition, and defiance to the laws of God. He talked to God and he said, I can run this universe better than you, and certainly better than your son. I am higher in the order of hierarchy than your son. I will not bow down before him. I will not recognize him, and I will not serve him. These are the words of Lucifer and all of these angels who followed him in that wave of pride said the same. Ever since Michael cast the angels out of heaven, there has been a war going on on earth. The scripture says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down to you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. This war is taking place today in our cities. Look at our children. Look at them as they get on drugs. Look at them as they have early sex and therefore get AIDS before the age of 20. 
Look at what is happening to these children, to their bodies, souls, and minds. This is the war in the streets of our cities, and our government will not even recognize and take the definitive action it needs to take to find that cure for AIDS and also to see to it that it is not spread. We have a big challenge on our hands. Who of us could even begin to consider that we could meet this challenge? We cannot do it, but with God we can, with his angels. And if we will learn to make the call, we will see how millions of angels can turn things around. Once you set your feet on the path, the path that leads you straight home to God, and make an about face and turn toward the sun, you will have to defeat the adversary within and without. This will be your challenge, but you will do it because Christ strengthens you, because the angels will do battle for you. The adversary does not attack those who are going away from God and who have no desire to return to God. He attacks the light bearers who bear not only the light, but also are willing to take responsibility to bear their own karma. We need the archangels because without them we are no matched for the fallen angels in our midst. As I have said, Archangel Michael is the prince of the archangels. All hosts of light serving in this system of worlds and beyond are under his command. He recently told us, There are days when for one single one of you, I and my legions, in order to defend you, will slay 10,000 demons. Think about that. Think about how these unseen helpers of God are defending you every day of your life. What a tremendous intercession we have. I know that Archangel Michael has personally saved my life a thousand times and many more times than I may not even be aware of. I'm sure the same is true for you. One of the saints of heaven whose name is Liberty told us, Archangel Michael is at your side and does answer your call and does answer it best when you keep a daily momentum of prayers to him. She said your call for help will be answered instantaneously when you have built this momentum. You recall the words of Jesus. They said that he spoke as one with authority. He had the authority of the I am that I am and the angels and he knew it. Let us follow in his footsteps and in his example. We can also command the angels, but we must never fail to do so in the name of God. We have no authority to command God or his angels. That is why we must also pronounce, always pronounce the name of God. The Bible says that he that will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So we say in the name of God, I am that I am given to us by Moses. In the name of that mighty I am presence and the Christ presence with me, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I decree. The statue of Archangel Michael that is in front of me shows him casting the devil out of heaven into the earth and binding that force. You can see Archangel Michael coming to you in full armor. You can see him with a mighty sword. It's actually a sword of blue flame. And he cuts away from you everything that is not of God, that is not of the light, and he reinforces for you your divine plan, your inner blueprint, yours to accept by free will if you choose to.